Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell. We are finishing up Chapter 7 today uh, by looking at the sampling distribution of the proportion. Uh, so remember, in the last section, we looked at the sampling distribution for sample mean. Uh, so now consider sampling distributions for a sample proportion. Uh, for that, the underlying distribution is the binomial distribution. So if we look at the number of successes, which we call X, in some number of trials, uh, which we call N, remember that in order to use the normal approximation to the binomial, you need N times P and N times Q uh, to both be at least five. Uh, so we will check that. Uh, in any problem where we're going to use this. The sampling distribution of the proportion describes the pattern that sample proportions tend to follow when randomly drawn from a population. The standard deviation for this distribution, which will uh, denote sigma sub p, is known as the standard error of the proportion. Remember, we used similar terminology for the standard error of the mean. So we're going to need a formula for that. And that formula is right here. Uh, so first we have P bar, which is the sample proportion. That's X divided by N, where X is the number of observations of interest in the sample, also known as successes. And N is the sample size, which is the number of trials. So the formula for the standard error of the proportion sigma sub p uh, is right here. It's the square root of p times one minus p over n. Uh, so this is going to take the place of the formula that we talked about in the last section, sigma sub x bar, uh, which you'll remember was sigma divided by the square root of n. And then to calculate a z-score, I think I pointed out to you once before that z-score pretty much always works the same way. It's a score from the distribution minus the mean of the distribution divided by the standard deviation of the distribution. So in this case, a, an individual score uh, from this sampling distribution is P bar. It's a sample proportion minus the population proportion. That's the mean of this uh, sampling distribution. And then the standard deviation of this sampling distribution is sigma sub p, uh, which we saw how to calculate on the last slide. All right, so here's an example of how this works. A political party claims that its candidate is supported by 60% of all voters, which means p equals 0.6. A poll is conducted to verify this claim. A random sample of size 250 finds 130 people who support the candidate. Does this evidence validate the political party's claim? So first we'll check for the uh, requirements to use the normal approximation to the binomial. Uh, since N is 250 and P is 0.6, obviously N times P and N times one minus P are go both going to be at least five. Therefore, the normal distribution can be used to approximate the binomial distribution. So the steps uh, to doing a problem like this are first find the standard error of the proportion and then calculate the z-score for the sample proportion, which in this case is 130 divided by 250, which is 0.52. So notice that sample proportion is lower uh, than what the political party is claiming it should be, but the question is, is it significantly lower, all right? We probably wouldn't be surprised if it was like 0.58 or 0.59. And then finally, determine the probability that a sample proportion of P bar, which is 0.52 or less, could be obtained if the true proportion is P equals 0.6. All right, so step one, sigma sub p, which is the square root of p times one minus p divided by n. That comes out to the square root of 0.6 times one minus 0.6 divided by 250. Uh, and you should verify on your calculator that that comes out to 0 0.0310. 
Next, we'll calculate the z-score, p bar minus p divided by sigma sub p is 0.52 minus 0.6, divide that by 0 0.0310. Uh, that comes out to negative 2.58. So a sample of size 250 with a sample proportion of 0.52 would be more than two and a half standard deviations below the mean. And if we calculate the probability of the uh, sample proportion being that low, uh, <clears throat> it turns into the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 2.58. At this point, you use your table A2 uh, to verify that that probability is 0 0.0049. So what that means is if the true percentage or the true proportion really is 0.6, the probability that a sample this size would have a proportion 0.52 or less is only 0 0.0049. Um, so since that's very unlikely, the more uh, the more likely scenario is that the uh, true population proportion is not as high as they're claiming. This is, this definitely does not validate their claim. All right, it makes me suspect that it's, uh, that that population proportion is lower. All right, and in the last section, we also talked about how to adjust uh, the standard error for a finite population. Uh, and this is going to be similar. So if the ratio of sample size to population size is greater than 5% and sampling is without replacement, then again, you need a finite population correction. So the formula for the standard error of the proportion uh, in a finite population, you start off with your usual square root of P times one minus P divided by N but then you have to multiply that by the square root of big N minus little n divided by big N minus one. So here's an example uh, where that comes up. A college claims that 70% of its 770 graduates landed full-time jobs in fields related to their majors. To test this claim, 120 students are randomly surveyed and 97 had found jobs in fields relating to their majors. Is the college's claim accurate? So uh, for, we start off the same way by checking whether we can use the um, normal approximation to the binomial. N times P is 120 times 0.7, which is definitely greater than or equal to five. And N times uh, one minus P, so that would be 120 times 0.3 is also greater than or equal to five. So we can use this approximation. All right, so the steps are uh, very similar to the last problem, except in this case, because the sample size is 120 and the population size is 770, uh, the sample size is well over 5% of the population size. So we will do the finite population uh, correction. So sigma sub p is the square root of p times one minus p over n, which you see over here, times the square root of big N minus little n over big N minus one. Uh, this is definitely another one that you should try on your calculator. Just verify that you're able to get 0 0.0384. So when we do the z-score, first of all, p bar, is x divided by n, 97 divided by 120 is about 0 0.808. So 0 0.808 minus 0 0.7 and then divide that by 0 0.0384 comes out to about 2.81. So the probability of getting a sample proportion this high is the probability that z is greater than or equal to 2.81 which is only 0 0.0025. So in this case, I would say that this college is actually selling themselves short. They're claiming that 70% of their graduates are getting uh, you know, jobs in their fields. And the evidence actually suggests that that proportion is much higher 
than what they're saying. Uh, because if the true population proportion is 0.7, as claimed, there is only about a 0.25% chance, a quarter of 1% chance, that the sample proportion could be 0 0.808 or more. Therefore, it appears the actual uh, population proportion is more than 0.7. So the percentage of graduating students employed in a field related to their major is actually greater than 70%. That's definitely the way it looks. And that's going to do it for section 7.5 and for chapter 7. So we'll see you next time.